Okay, so the last session before lunch will be by Shirish Thanks. about his experience with Debian. Uh, hi, everybody. Uh, I was thinking I'll be talking to newbies, so I didn't prepare any slides, I didn't prepare anything. And uh, now I guess I'm in a problem because it's all experienced DDs out here whom I'm addressing. So I, I'm probably not going to say anything which you, do, you guys do not really know. But still, uh, just sharing as a user or as, as somebody who uh, uh, by circumstances got involved into Debian, how that whole thing happened. So I'll start off right from the beginning as a, uh, I'm a product of a single mother. Uh, when I was like probably about six, seven years of age, uh, I got sick and got admitted to a hospital. And there, uh, my mother is a working mother. So for her, uh, it, she didn't have much time to look after me. So the only thing which was there for me to pass my time there was comics and English comics. And I didn't know English at that point in time. But I had to force myself. And Mandrake the, ma the Magician was one of my favorite uh, you know, cartoon characters. and I just went on from there. Once I got, I got hooked to it. And then I read everything like Mills and Boone and what on and on. Uh, 10 years go by. And then in India on 91, uh, we had some financial difficulties on the uh, economy side. And India decided to open up. Till that time, we didn't know that there is something called the outside world. It was a very isolated uh, sort of an environment. Uh, uh, we were like, we, we call Russia as the Iron Curtain. We also had an Indian curtain till that time. So in 91, when the war happened with Iraq, America and Iraq, so that was the first time satellite television came to India. And we came to know that there is something called satellite television and there is an, another world out there. So the, around the same time, there was a, a, a sort of a movement to having internet in India. But uh, the government of the day, at that point in time, was not really sure as to uh, are Indians capable of understanding what internet is, uh, as governments do. So they were being cautious. So what they did was they, uh, they gave access to few educational institutes by the name of ERNET, E-R-N-E-T. So uh, if you go to some of the allied institutions in India, uh, that if there was a time machine, if you would go back, you would find that only few IITs, which we call as the Indian Institute of Technologies, they used to have it, and few other more institutions. I was a, that, this was around my 10th. Uh, in India, we have something like uh, KG, upper KG, 1 to 10, and then you have this three uh, arts, sciences, and uh, engineering, and something like these courses. So I was in my 10th around that time, and this was my 10th holidays. So a friend of mine was, uh, uh, there's a private education institute by the name of NIIT. And NIIT had this something called a computer drone. So he sort of gave me access with his car that you could go and I could browse something called the internet. And I had absolutely no clue what this internet thing was all about. So uh, we went there, we saw it, we explored it. We, we, uh, we downloaded a lot of games, we saw a bit of porn. It was like really being awake to this whole other world. We had something called the Usenet, which was there at that point in time. So it was just understanding that. And it was really, for the first time, we could understand that there is no censorship. And it was a shocker to me at that point in time, because in India, we are used to having censorship in our press, even today. There is a lot the press cannot. To talk about, for example, if a politician is having an affair, that will not be in the press even today. So there are a lot of things which uh, the press does not uh, speak about. Now what happened was, uh, now jump. I'll jump to around 95 when they started giving access to people, uh, which, which we call as shell access. Uh, if some of you, I'm sure some of you would be. Uh, using internet at that point in time. And we had the 64 kbps board modems, where uh, it will make some silly sounds, and then you will get connected to the internet. 
and it was like 45 minutes we used to try and try and try and then we'll get connected to the net. And that connection would be there only for 15 minutes or 20 minutes and then we have to do the whole thing again and again. But still, um, that's 15, 20 minutes were really nice for us because we actually could see what's happening somewhere outside. Now what happened was I had, around a similar time I bought my first computer and it was an MS Windows machine. And obviously as, as a teenager, I was fond of games and porn and everything. Now what used to happen is every month or two down the line, my machine would crash. There would be a virus or something or the other and it would crash. And I used to be so frustrated because I felt like I was going down in a circle all the time, you know, like there, there is no way out. And, uh, and this used to really bug me out. Uh, then around the same time, what happened was there were these magazines which used to, which had started coming up in India. Uh, one of the magazines was called PC Quest. I don't know how many of you, some of you might know that magazine. At that point, what they were doing is they were, they were starting to give away. One sec. Am I going too fast? No, okay. Sorry, because I tend to be fast sometimes. So uh, what happened was, uh, they were giving this uh, free CDs along with a magazine. Uh, and it, there was this uh, something called PC Quest, PC Quest Linux. And the only thing is that a friend of mine told me that, hey, uh, I know you have problems with your PC and it keeps crashing all the time. Uh, and I'm an Agarwal, and Agarwals are known to be, uh, they, we like good deals. So what they said to me was, okay, your machine is crashing. Uh, there is this magazine which has just come out. There, you buy the magazine and you get a free CD along with it. And that free CD is supposed to have no viruses. So even if you go to on a pawn site or if you download a game or something or the other, your machine will not crash. So in that greed or whatnot, I went and I bought that. Uh, the first time I tried to install it, it was a total failure. It took me a while to understand the dynamics of it because you're not really from a C colon, D colon kind of a world to going to a slash root and uh, that whole uh, uh, understanding that takes time. So what I used to do is like I would try the installer when it crashed and it, uh, I will obviously come to some point where I, I could not go further. Then I will revert back to my windows and then it happened two, three times but I finally managed to break through the learning curve and install Linux on my machine. Once I did that, okay, I got a bare bones desktop and I was, I didn't know where to go from here. Because even if you've got a desktop, networking used to be an issue at those point in time. So uh, it took me a lot of time to get those networking drivers and things done. And I was still not happy because the looks were not so great and I was really missing my Windows desktop. So I think for the next three or four years, I kept hopping from one distribution to the other, hoping to find something which would uh, resemble my workflow. Finally, I came to something called Ubuntu, uh, which happened, I think, about 2004 or 2005. Uh, this is where I finally felt that I'm at peace and now I can really explore things. Now, what happens is when you are running any distribution at some point in time, you are going to encounter bugs. So, and when you encounter bugs, May, uh, sometimes you feel like reporting that bug and getting it fixed. So if it's something which really was pissing me off, I would go and try to file a bug. And uh, I, I do not really want to say that Ubuntu is bad, but their workflow somewhere is, the, is like this, that okay, we can make a note of the problem that you have, but this will be only uh, uh, fixed in the next release. And uh, they, they would say, okay, if you want to test a release, then you have to go to the alpha and download that whole thing and then uh, see if your bug got fixed or not. And that was very annoying for me because uh, if I do go to an alpha level uh, Ubuntu installation, I would have bugs of other things. So it was, again, a never-ending story because if one bug got fixed, there would be 10 more which were there which would get exposed. And I was not really happy with that situation. At the same time, I also saw that Ubuntu was following some policies which were not really in tune with what I had thought of as free software at that point in time. 
had also become to become slightly more ethically aware of the things which were happening around me. So uh, I had no recourse but to try it and dump it. I think I tried woody at that point in time, uh, woody insulation. But even there, I got a hitch because I think at the very end of the insulation uh, in woody, I think it asked for a MAC ID of your network card. And I was not really sure what the MAC ID of I think it's the next release of something where those things were fixed and I was able to have a Debian installation. The best thing about Debian, which I have found till date, is I, I file a bug and uh, people are there. People, some people respond quickly, some people might not respond quickly, but usually the bug is fixed in where it is. For example, if I file a bug in testing, it will be fixed in testing. If I file a bug in stable, it will be fixed in stable. So I don't really have to jump through loops to get my bugs fixed. So that is where I actually uh, started playing. And then I realized that, OK, one thing which uh, I felt we are lacking quite a bit is that documentation, which uh, now I do, I do not want to criticize or, or say something, but I, f I really feel Moin Moin is not the, really the way to go. Uh, MediaWiki is a far better uh, wiki environment simply for the fact that uh, on Moin Moin you have to put the whole page and you have to edit the whole page. While in MediaWiki I could just take a snapshot, I could just make a section and write my two lines to it. So I do not, uh, I do not feel like I can bug up the page or I can really mess it up. So uh, while I could not do that and I do not really have the capability or the drive for that, but I would wish somebody would take it up. But what I did at my own end, because I have a very forgetful nature, so I just started putting it on my blog, okay, this is what happened with me and this is how I fixed it, in the hope that other people would also find it useful and uh, 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 use that as a resource. While I was doing that, I also got connected with a lot of people who were uh, having similar issues and similar problems. And we felt that an outreach uh, activity was needed. So uh, the last four or five years, we have been just going around the country, wherever any institution calls us and whatnot, and we would have a mini Depcon F. So we'll go there and we'll share with people uh, whatever we know about Debian. Some, nowadays, it's, it's kind of Linux have become mainstream. So people think it's, it's what we do is more for jobs and stuff like that. But our focus is entirely somewhat different. So, but we try to kind of uh, do whatever we can. So that's all about it from my end. If people have any questions. Are there any questions or comments? Or Everybody wants to go. Oh. You like to get more involved with Debian. As a developer. Uh, I hope to. I mean, uh, of course, there is this dream that we do have a DEPCON F in India. Uh, I do not really, because I have been seeing the kind of work that people have been doing here, and I think we'll really need to get, uh, uh, get more organized, far more organized than what we do in many DEPCON Fs. Because, uh, the most that we do when we uh, organize a mini Depcon F, it's we hardly require about 10 or 15 days. But I guess for a Depcon F to do, it's I think a year-round activity that needs to be done to have Depcon F. My idea of coming here was basically to see if I can learn from people who are organizing Depcon Fs and take some of that wisdom home as to how we would, if we were to ever to do that, how we uh, do that. And yes, I would like to be involved more in documentation and marketing aspect of it, because I think we sell ourselves very, very poorly. So that is uh, one part I, I hope that we can do something about. Also, there are bits in Debian installer, which uh, as far as it's, it's a very good installer. It does a lot of great work. But again, UI is an issue there, I, I believe, a bit. So those are the things which uh, I do not really have, again, skill sets there. But I do know what needs to be fixed there. Or at least I have some ideas. So that's it. Yeah.
Thank you all. Is there any other questions? Sorry, before we. Okay, then let's thank the Shirish again. Thank you.